I don't know about you, but I love playing the guess where I am game, and I'm wondering if you might be able to work out where I am. In contrast, vastly to Spain, when you walk past houses here, you can really see inside. People often don't shut their curtains in the evening, and it's very fascinating to have a look at the beautiful interiors as you wander by. Another thing this country is so famous for. This is just a stone's throw away from the palace of the King and Queen of the Netherlands. And look, this is it. This is the main residence of the King and Queen of the Netherlands. Of course, no, the Nessa Leyland's interior me. design studio. And I'm so excited to take you inside because it's in a beautiful setting, an art gallery. So they have a sort of dual arrangement on these premises. And we're in luck today because the artist of some really great work from Ukraine happens to be here as well, taking away some art that he's just sold for a client. Let's go inside. This is Lucas. Tell me about what you have in this incredible space here. This, I mean, look at this, isn't it beautiful? Yeah, so what we have in the gallery is uh, anything that's not abstract, even though some works really are very close to abstract. Yeah. This one is an American living in Europe, Michael Ryan. It's generally European, from Western Europe, Eastern Europe. I had an exhibition, which is just over, of Ukrainian artists from Ukraine, for me to support them. Have you got any of the work by the Ukrainian artists actually in the gallery right now? That very sculpture is going to be brought away in a little while. Ah, oh, so, sorry, this is about to be collected, you say, Lucas? We are going to bring it. We are going to bring it. And oh, my goodness. And the street sculptor is actually coming in in just two minutes. One second, he's around the corner. Uh -huh. He's going to dismantle it, and we're going to bring it together to the, to the client who bought it. You're welcome in. Uh, your father, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> he's a sculptor, he's running away. And you say there are two pieces. Which one's the second piece? The other piece? one in the corner, also the bigger ones. Uh, okay, the one at the window in the corner. Yeah, that's the one. Oh, the fantastic. Yeah. Hello. That's Pavlo, the artist who made these both sculptures. Oh my goodness, hello. So uh -huh. it also brings me to say that this is what makes my work so much fun. The differentiation, the different things one does, and the different people one meets. Of course, art need not be political. I have to carefully tread. Keep people don't want war scenes in their living room, even though they might be very interested in mm. what is happening. And also, I really love what you said about the way that actually it can represent a totally different aspect to Ukraine, to what we now think about automatically, which is war when we hear the word Ukraine. What you're doing is you're challenging that discourse and saying, you know what, these are people with their own identity, their own culture, and let's express that and show what it is. So, yeah, I love that. Це наш рідний Крим, який нас анексувала Росія. Це місце Таханкут називається. Це саме за західний край полуострова. That's the western part of Crimea. Okay, so this is where he produced the art. So he produced the art in a time of peace. Yes. And it, it, what what is this? Tell me, because it looks like a piece of sea driftwood here. Так воно і виглядає. Тут взагалі то дуже багато роботи. Я намагався те, що я знаходив у морі, піднімати з дна і зробити його максимально подібно до природи. Наче рука людини там менш за всіх торкалась. Oh, amazing! So piece of stone, it's from the sea in a tarpon boot. You have the white rocks, which are like this white uh, mm. the sand rocks there. It's like a bit like a Normandy coast, let's say, where you have this beautiful rock. So he was used to dive there, and when he was diving, he saw these beautiful stones, and he wanted to uh, keep the nature as much as possible. So um, the, his work would be like it's like it's not touched by the human hand, let's say. That was the whole idea. And it has very special lighting. He didn't say it now, but he told me that before, that when in, it's a, really the really south of Ukraine, so it has a different sunlight. So he was seeing <sighs> the 
shadows in it. So it was kind of in this, the, the block didn't look like that, but it was because of the play of light, he was seeing something in it and he was trying to see, to make something what he saw. So he was making pictures there and actually to this memory what he saw there when he was diving in Crimea. That's, that's amazing. So diving in Crimea, yes, reflections of the light on yeah. the water. Yeah. I mean, this is incredible. I mean, it's an aspect yeah. that we never hear about. Yeah. So it's, it's really... So inspiration is really from nature. And... Uh -huh. Дуже пряні такі запахи, смак it's a, it's a, трав жодної людини і величезні скелі десь приблизно 50-70 метрів. No the, hills or anything, the, the, and then you have suddenly a huge like this, like the white cliffs of Dover. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so that's a except it's very, it's a beautiful smell of so yeah. wildflowers. It's a very wild place. No villages, nothing. The sun is very high, and when you look at these camels, they are on the ground. The sun is so bright, it's very bright. The camel, you see it on his hands. I took a pencil and just drew things that I saw there on the top. It's very bright sun. 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 Piece of stone, let's say, travel a thousand kilometers from South to Ukraine to North to Kiev and then to Netherlands, another 2,300 kilometers. Goodness so me, water, yeah. Uh, travel 3,000 uh, so kilometers. This, so, this piece of stone is from the very sea. Yeah. yeah. So, it's a little piece of Ukraine. Yes, it's a little piece of Ukraine and a little piece of our. A peaceful memory, I would say, because yes. that's it's an absolutely amazing place there. Not only annexed, but it's completely militarized by Russia. There is a, they destroyed the nature there, they drilled all the rocks. There are, yeah, that's where we are bombarded now from. Uh, yes, yeah. and, and yet at this time, this, you're right about the peace because this yeah. comes from the this time the before the war. Yes, this is them memories that they really cherish and a lot of their work is about the memories. Wow. Incredible. Thank you so much. We'll be able to return completely, but at least we always have it in our mind. Першу, першу, першу істоту на, на землі, першу жінку, першу людину, okay. яка жила на життя. О, май гуднес, о, май гуднес, о. Кремія є трохи як парадайз на землі, це дуже красиво місце, тому я думаю, що моя ідея була зробити Еву фотку, тому що це як парадайз на землі, і Ева, так, Ева. That's yeah. so lovely. Yeah. It's so beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That we got me. Camilla is upstairs. It's mahogany wood that Pavlo got from Vietnam. Without knowing anything, he made the sculpture into the shape he wanted. And while he was working, he found a piece of shrapnel in the tree, which has completely grown into the shrapnel. And all you can see, you can show it upstairs, it has a black line, which is what was left of the shrapnel that he took out. And of course, imagine making a sculpture in, in Ukraine, in the middle of the war, to find the remnants of not a horrible conflict. Mm, 50 years ago. The pain and the me, symbolism. It gave me goosebumps when I heard the story. My goodness. Yeah. The story about his other work, this one big mood of two people making love. Yes. He said exactly. that's when Russia started bombarding Ukraine this October, um, and Kyiv was in the darkness many days, without water, uh, without electricity. Um, my father was working in, a, in, a, in territorial defense forces all the night and in the daytime when it was a bit of light, natural light, he was cutting this piece of wood for three months. So that's the, the, the peace he could find in his uh, mind. Because like, even in this terrible, terrible time when we are as a nation terrorized by Russia, we are thinking about love and peace and making this beautiful sculpture. What an incredible... Moment between Я приїжджав і в ротаційні дні робив це велике диво. Any days when he had a rotation and break from his service in the military, he was doing his work. Thank you so much. Absolutely amazing. I mean, look at this. This is like a treasure trove. It is a treasure trove. People love it when they come and see here and they buy. 
they find things. Yeah. And they get very enthusiastic. It's, the, lovely. Yeah. it's a lovely uh, to, to, to be with them. It is. Property, yeah. It's like a sort of Aladdin's cave yeah. in here because you never know what you could discover just That's around right. a corner. That's right. Here we are entering the quarters of Vanessa's interior design studio. Hello, Nessie. Oh my goodness, look at this space. Oh, this is beautiful. Tell me about where we are. Uh, so this is my meeting room, which is on the first floor of Lucas's gallery, Ditabay Powen. And um, yeah, it's all, all of the furniture in here and in the room out there is furniture that I've either designed or supplies that I work with very closely. Some pieces like these chairs are vintage that I've sourced and then I've reupholstered and slightly kind of altered the shape of the bases. Wow, sorry, pull that out again because look at this. It's like a plush, soft, luxurious rug. Yeah. And you can sit on it, it's so tactile. It's shearling. It's uh, from a really lovely Scandinavian company. Um, and then just nice and detailed, beautiful uh, velvet um, from the Yarn <gasps> Collective on the back. Oh, I love that. So you've got the two tonal yeah. effect and you've got different textures yeah. all wrapped into one. Exactly. Oh, amazing. Mm. So you immediately lull your clients into this sense of exuberance and luxury well that's the idea <laughs> and, um over time we've got other kind of um product designers that are new and up and coming that we also want to be in this space so it's like a lovely way for us to showcase their work um and it's obviously a really lovely inspiring space for us to bring our clients and to present uh, all of the floor plans and the design ideas for their home. And I'm just noticing this light above you. Tell me about this yeah. light. <laughs> this is my child. <laughs> um, this is by a company called Visual and Comfort. And um, they, it's an American company. Uh, that's alabaster and then this is brass on top and oh, I... lots of famous designers work designing. So this one is a Kenny Wurstler who's a an incredible American designer who's uh, really famous for use of colour and textures and she's, yeah, she's a bit of a god in, in the design world. Um, so it's nice to have something that she's done because I find her really inspiring. Yes. And then there's the products that you sell as well. Can you yeah. show us those? So everything here actually we do sell. Um, these are cushions that um, are kind of used with offcuts from projects and then we get to be kind of quite fun and creative so here you know we make this kind of gorgeous pyramid and mm. these lovely spherical cushions here oh i absolutely is, love it I know. this kind of reminds me of a sea urchin yeah so this is like lovely this is more of a little kind of poof seat for a kid in a kid's room or somewhere which is really nice and i'm noticing these ones down here i love these yeah. as well yeah this is actually so this is fabric that i just found um it's not an off cut and i just loved it and i've been doing that quite a lot in leon is it different on the back tell yes. me about that so that's a, oh, so that that is leftover velvet from a project that i backed it with so then i could make two cushions mm. um which is actually incidentally sometimes what we do in projects if we're trying to save a little bit of money we back it in a less expensive material and then have a more expensive material in front. Mm. And yet, let me tell you about the rug, because this is one of my very, very favourite rug suppliers. This is by a wonderful uh, company, a British company. They're based out of Notting Hill in London. Yeah. And they are called A Rum Fellow. And this is their Hikara rug, and they do this in lots of different colours. It's beautiful um, and it's vast. Yeah, and that's amazing that they, they can make it so big. They can come in all sizes. Um, and what's lovely with this one is that they put the border all the way around and they're standard designs for that. And they've also designed completely bespoke rugs. So they can design something for you if you give them an idea or you can do it in conjunction, but they're, yeah, they're absolutely amazing. And the last thing I'd love you to tell me about. Oh, the chair. 
I designed. So this is inspired from a New Orleans project that we did. Um, and we found this uh, chair frame by this American kind of vintage reclaimed company called Chairloom. And basically they kind of upcycle old frames or kind of reupholstered chairs. So it's lovely, it's kind of recycling and reusing. So it's lovely and sustainable. We kind of adapted a chair with them and then we put on a completely different fabric, but I love the shape so much. Um, and it's super comfortable that we recreated it here as well for the showroom. This is amazing. Yeah, it's great. And the fabric is super fun. Super fun. It really, really is. Um, it was fabric that was again actually left over from my upholsterer from another project, not mine. Um, and it had been in, in his workshop for years. That looks so very comfortable. It is really comfortable. <laughs> Gosh, you sort of, you're almost cuddled by the arms of this armchair. And it's lovely because it's got this kind of, this dip that goes down. The oh my goodness, I hadn't noticed that. You're right. So it's dipped into the shape of yeah. your arm. That's magnificent. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it's time to leave. It also is located in a stunning setting, right here in the town centre of The Hague. Yeah. Buying a little ice cream here. No. Look, you can see the crowns all the way down this road leading to the art gallery. Lizzie, tell me about the king and queen. So it's King Willem. <laughs> and his wife is Maxima, who's actually originally Argentinian. The people's people. Yeah, and they're really, really loved. So you have this fabulous day called King's Day, which is when everybody dresses up in orange. Um, so it's Alfred's oh, you like favorite orange? color. My favorite day. Oh. And it's, it's really, really fun. And it's to celebrate the King's birthday and it's great. So everybody has a big party. Big parties everywhere for the whole day wow. and night. So it's a public holiday, no yeah, doubt. Absolutely. Wonderful. It's brilliant. I am just in my sister's favourite wine shop here on the Frederik Hendriklan, which we call the Fred. So that's the main swanky shopping area of this district in The Hague. And it's a lovely wine shop. I realised that I'm not going to be buying any Spanish wine here today. Instead, I'm going French. Just going to have a nice little description here of what we got. OK. So we have the Le Moulier. Yeah. Uh, it's very fresh, yeah. easy going, light. Uh, and really easy to drink. And then we have the Roussette, Domaine de Roussette. It yeah. is a, a rosé from Provence. And it is a little more fruity, a little more body, but very elegant and soft. Uh, so I'm curious which one you prefer. And I went for rosé because you get all the benefits of red wine with that. Yeah. Uh, so technically it's really, really healthy. And uh, organic. Ooh. So yeah. Oh, that's really great to know. Yes. Uh, yeah, and the other thing to say about these bottles is that they're not super expensive. We're talking 10 and 12 euros a bottle. So I think it's going to be really nice if I can find something, you know, just not super special, but very, very enjoyable to drink. What does your most expensive wine come to in, in this shop, would you say? We have this uh, Abyss Rosé. It's oh. a sparkling wine, uh, champagne, uh, and they put it in the 400 uh, meter uh, depth in the ocean. Very special. Wow. Over 400 euros. And we only have six bottles in the Netherlands, so it's something special. Oh my yeah. goodness. So it's 450 meters under the water. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh, so yeah. they have it in some airtight container. Yeah, exactly. Any idea where in the world this would yeah, be this found? Would be between uh, France and uh, England. Okay, yeah. it's going to be a big amount of ocean to search for these bottles, <laughs> yes. but 
Golly. It is Claire Briand. And what year is this? Does it make a difference, the year for this bottle, do you know? 19. Yes, 2019. It's, it's not special. super, super old, actually. No, no because uh, champagne, or you drink it when it's really old, it's a vintage. Yeah. Or you drink it uh, fresh, actually. Yeah. Ah, so yeah. in between is not good. No. No, uh, Gosh. it depends, of course, on the way they make it. Yeah, uh, we have the the label of Leclerc Briand, and they or prefer fresh. That's why they put the this gorge on it. Or they have like a vintage, and then you can go. Um, Two thousand and three. 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 Yeah. Okay, so twenty year old bottle of champagne. Yeah, I love the way they've got the dustiness. As you can see, they only clean the top here to put the, ah, the label on so it. so you but can the see rest, that. It's all. As, uh, as ah. from out of the ocean. Okay, we're ready to go. Well, <laughs> I'm speechless. I've just walked into this shop off the Fred and it's. I am inside and the gentleman has very kindly allowed me to just show you some of his beautiful items. So let's have a look. I'm going to start with this spectacular chandelier it's really really lovely it's got so many of these glass pieces on it that we've seen in other episodes it looks like it's in really really great condition which often is not the case when i find a chandelier i'm just going to tell you what this is okay this is 3800 actually i would say that seems like a pretty reasonable price but i also really love this one with the sweeping arms it's a little bit smaller the curved swan like neck parts at the top and then the way it branches out at the bottom is really beautiful so this one is 650 euros but i think these are quite fascinating as well but I think it's a really interesting and beautiful piece. I wonder if there's a place in the Magical Modern's Mansion for this. Wow, this wall sconce is so pretty. She's like a sort of mermaid angel. Oh, I just discovered something that takes me back to my childhood when my parents had parties. They had one of these punch bowls where you have a ladle and you will pour your punch into these little glass cups along the sides. That is absolutely divine. Can you see the ladle inside? And this leaf work is absolutely beautiful. I'd say that there may be a few of the cups missing. What we have here is an empire candlestick and there's two of them. They date back to 1810. They really are super incredible and impressive. I do love the cherubs a lot. Their facial expressions and the way they just seem so relaxed. But this light is absolutely incredible. It dates to 1950 and it, as you can see, it's a combination of milk glass and stained glass. I think it's pretty cool. And then can you see this lovely ornately carved wooden white chair in the reflection of the mirror here? Well, there are two of those. I love the mirror too, but there are two of these white chairs and I absolutely love them. And I think they would go really, really well in the house. And they could be a very cool upholstery project. Although the condition of the upholstery on the chairs right now is excellent. So you wouldn't have to do anything with them unless you actually just needed a change or to make them work into a room. And then the mirrors that I was telling you about are over here. And they are really, really beautiful. From Belgium, from about the 1900s. This is 650 euros. And I absolutely love the decorative work on it. It's this lovely gold and wood, and the wood looks like it's actually pretty healthy. That's something I've really learned 
a lot about through error in the past and detailing just going all the way down. Oh my goodness, this front one is incredible. It's got little lion's faces. Bowl of fruit on the top. And even the ones behind, well, this one's pretty grand. We've got this very flamboyant decoration at the top and it's ornately decorated throughout. This one's 1,500, this really large one at the back. So this rear mirror is French, dating back to about 1880. The condition is really good. And it's really interesting because they call this an antique brocante. So they don't claim that everything is antique in here. Um, and I really like the selection of pieces that he has chosen. They've got history, they're beautiful. The quality in the shop is really high and I'm hopeful that maybe in time we'll be able to buy a couple of items from here eventually. We are in Nessie's interiorly designed kitchen in The Hague and we've been having a little bit of a chat because it's going to be our sister's 50th birthday next month in August and we wanted to experiment with creating a signature family cocktail and Nessie, you've been doing some research, haven't you? Uh, I have. Recently, I went into uh, Hotel de Zan, which is a very iconic hotel in The Hague and um, it's a beautiful hotel that's been, the interiors have been designed by Jacques Garcia, but it's, the building itself is absolutely steeped in history. So we're writing a, kind of a blog about it. And so we asked the barman, what cocktail would they recommend? And so the mixologist came up with the Saint-Germain spritz, which is essentially shot of Saint-Germain, liqueur which is made from elderflower yeah. sparkling wine champagne prosecco or whatever you have in hotels as of course they used pomeray champagne which is winston churchill's champagne of choice um, and he also stayed in their hotel and sparkling water you quickly mentioned that you were doing this for your blog and uh -huh. this is for your interior design studio in the yeah. Hague. We try to do one every few months and this blog that's coming out is on uh, whoop, Vassenaar and The Hague. Hotel Design is so beautiful when you go inside. We had afternoon yeah. tea there a few years ago and it was with it. After, yeah, yeah, sorry, go I'm on. interrupting, the but their afternoon teas are absolutely iconic ah, um, okay. and vast and really, really worth it. Yeah, I remember that they had a really nice selection of teas and then you had the quintessential cucumber sandwiches and all sorts of scones and other lovely bits. Thank you. Um, Nessie, you said as well it might be fun to put a bitter into it. I did. So I was thinking that there might be a nice type of bitter that we could put in as an infusion, like some oh, kind I of botanical. That. So a botanic infusion botanical. in order to create a little more zing to yeah. pop. Okay. Oh, I feel like a cocktail bar <laughs> person and not an interior designer. Okay, fine. Well, this is great. We are ready for our guests tonight, Nessie. We are indeed. Cheers. Salute. Salute. Oh. oh, that's really good. The Festa Mayor has come. We missed it last year because we weren't actually living here. And I want to go and see what's going on in the square. <laughs> Sounds pretty exciting.
Let's go.